Hiya and welcome to Tight TV. It's Neil and Dave. Uh, we're going to have a, a bit of a chat about Cardiff game coming up. Uh, it's going to be an interesting one, I think. I think we all can agree on that. Uh, so glad to have you on, Dave. Um, bit of a recap. What you know, we'll get your thoughts of uh, what happened at, at weekend. It shouldn't take too long, and then we'll get on to the Cardiff <laughs> game. So, yeah, what were your thoughts, mate, about uh, weekend? Well, it's uh, it wasn't what I was expecting in a in a good way, but it still wasn't the, the, the result we were looking for. I was expecting a bit of a, a bit of a backlash from Bournemouth, and you know I was expecting a lot more than that. But they struggled in the final third of the field for me. If they could have found the net, you know, and got a few more shots on target, you know, we'd have been we'd have been dead and buried by half time. But they couldn't. They seemed to lack any real quality up front. Um, Bit of a calamitous goal to give away, but um, I'm going to give Brad Collins the benefit of the doubt and put that down to the to the weather conditions. But um, yeah, it's it's one of them games you're not going to win. Bournemouth, mm. you know, they're riding high at the top. They've had a couple of bad results, but you know teams like them are not going to go on a bad run forever. You know, and it's the second half was a I thought it was a much better performance. It's probably one of the best halves of the season that I've seen. But, and again, that's not really saying very much, yeah. you know. And to say that we had all the new players playing that hadn't played together before, like Vita and M Matty Wolf, and I thought they played together really well. Um, both of them two had great games, and I thought when Aiden Marsh came, I thought he was a cracking prospect, and yeah. I just want to see more of him. Yeah, really do. I was, I was impressed with him when he came on. Um, I was surprised when I saw a name on team sheet with Matty Wolf, if I'm being honest. When I see Vita on, but like I said, Matty Wolf in the first half, he didn't look out of place at all. He was getting stuck into tackles. Yeah. And when Eddie, when Eddie Marsh came on, even he was up for the game. And I think because they're like local lads, yeah, they, they understand what it means, don't they, to, to town and that. That's what we're missing, I think. The players that play with, with the passion for the club and for the town, you know, we haven't really seen that since, since the days of Adam Hamill. He means someone mm. that actually bled Barnsley Red. And uh, it's, it's good to see, and you could see um, young Marshy at the end of the game, he was really emotional, and yeah. you could see what it meant to him, yeah. you know, and you, you just don't see that in the game anymore. No. Players are there to, to earn a wage and, and do a job these days. They, there's not enough to play for the love of the game, or especially for the, for the love of the club they're at. Yeah. And to see, you know, that sort of emotion and that sort of effort from, you know, young players, is it's really great to see, no matter who you support. If you're bringing youngsters through that showing that enthusiasm that drive to play for the club it's absolutely brilliant to see and you know from what i saw i'm glad to see that he's on he's on our side and yeah i just hope he gets more of a chance because he he looks sharp and he looks he looks enthusiastic refreshing and all like you said it's, it's refreshing to see someone like that someone at such a young age what it means to him and getting emotional um yeah. so obviously we've got you know that were bournemouth and i think vast majority of fans are the Bit, probably expecting a three or four no defeat against Bournemouth, so to come away probably a bit flattering. But like I said, weather conditions and you know Bournemouth on another day we could have you know because we're passing ball about really to be fair and you know what you're going to get under Scotty Parker, he's going to be well disciplined, well drilled side like we're at Fulham. So I mean Cardiff had a, a good <laughs> victory didn't we? Uh, yesterday, so they had a decent win. So we're going to be going in this. I mean Jordan, we've got that Yugil, uh, yeah, on yeah. one. And what a debut he had. You know, he couldn't go off to a better start, unfortunately, for us. Um, so it's going to be Cardiff, Dave. What, <laughs> what are you expecting from them when we come to Oakwell? Well, what they always give when they come to Oakwell, uh, it's not always the best performance, but they always seem to get the results. And as it's my local team, they always seem to do us over. And it's it's really frustrating at the best of times. And I can't see anything different happening this week. Mm. You know, they're going to be buoyed by that result on Sunday. Um, I've spoken to some of the lads and they've said that the performance wasn't great, but it was better. You know, it's in, they're, they're improving. So, I don't know. The only the only thing that I'm hoping that will work in our favour is the fact that they've got a massive tie on Sunday up at Anfield. Yeah. And maybe they'll have one eye on the on the Cup game because that is a huge game. You know, they're, ling they're lingering in the, long, the wrong side of the table like we are, but, you know, you, if you've got a game against Liverpool four days after, you, you're going to you're gonna have an eye on that, aren't you? You're gonna yeah. people aren't they want that one you don't want to get injured, do you? You know, with challenges that you might go into on a normal game, mm. you're gonna be a bit wary about because you don't wanna, you know, you don't wanna miss 
Yeah. You know, getting out onto that Anfield pitch and playing in a game like that. But you know, that's 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 my hope. It, it might it might happen. It might not. I've I think seen. What... I think I've been to see Barnsley and Cardiff fourteen times, and I've seen us win once. And I think I've seen us draw three times. So it's a bit of a bogey side for me. Mm. And the fact that I still haven't seen us win since the last time we beat Cardiff four three in December twenty sixteen. Mm. You know, and I can't keep counting the amount of games I've been to since then. It's. <laughs> It doesn't bode well in our favour, and the fact that we're on this bad run at the moment. Yeah. But you know, anything can happen in ninety minutes, and this run's got to come to an end at some point. You know, we can't go winless. Well, I hope we can't go winless for the rest of the season. Hmm. And you know, you know, maybe a, a cold evening at Oakwell, combined with a couple of uh, pumped-up young players, and an opposition that are maybe looking towards the weekend. Who knows what could happen? You know, maybe we can. Sneak a result. I'd, I'd, I'd literally, I, you know, I, a draw is no good to us at this stage of the no. season. I know it's only an eight-point gap, you know, between us and safety, but we, we need wins. And you know, I've not been able to see where our wins been coming from in, in recent games. So we, we need to be beating teams that are down there with us. You know, I suppose it is a six-pointer when you look mm. at it. And you know, if we if we can't win these games, no disrespect to Cardiff. You know, they've gone through a lot of changes with management and with players and they've had players injured, same as us, yeah. you know, but no disrespect to them, but they are down the bottom end of the table with us. And, you know, these are the games we need to be getting results in. We can't expect to go and, you know, beat teams like Bournemouth, mm. Fulham, you know, Blackburn, teams around the top of the league, because, you know, their team's in form and we're not in form and maybe, sure maybe we just need a couple of results to get us and turn us around but the, the lack of players on show at the moment is it's very very worrying you know we've got yeah. so many players out injured or out for whatever other reason and depleted squad and you make you do what you can with the depleted squad and you know we're not a sort of team that's got a you know got a, um, a deep squad at the best of times and with all this now it's just literally patching yourself up and getting on with it and doing the best you can and it's Sadly, not been good enough, but as I say, it's going to end sometime this this run of bad results, and it's hope it's Wednesday. That's what I'm just thinking. It's like no disrespect to like such as Cardiff and that, but like what you mentioned there, Dave, is that we should be should be. But these are, this is opportunity for us to be getting picking points up from teams round about us because, like I say, further you go up, I mean, you look at your Lutons and that, they're on some fantastic form and they're really playing well. Even though I think they draw weekend. Um, but we are playing well as a team. Teams that are down near us and struggling. This is time where we should be bit like picking up points. Um, like I said, Cardiff. For some, it's, like I said, it's a bogey team, isn't it? So the worrying mm-hmm. thing is, is that if we then, if we don't do, if we don't pick a result up on Wednesday, we're going to FA Cup against Huddersfield. But then you look after, you look after that, and you look at the fixture what's coming up after it. It's like. We are we going to start because we, that's when we've got us uh, Lawtons and UQPRs and that coming up, and that's when it's going to start hitting us because we'll have as um, as games that have been cancelled. You know, it's going to be more or less playing a, a week and midweek, week and midweek, and like you just said, via bare bones of the squad, Sibit went to Arts, um, which which got me a bit because I know that we're trying to get the Knox Forest game called off. Because we were saying we didn't have enough uh, squad players or team members or whatever, but obviously, Sibit must have been well because he went up a past medical. He played at weekend. He got man at match for that. So it just goes to show then. So why didn't he allow? You know why won't they allowed to play? It, it, I just couldn't get just don't get mentality of that. And and for me, football league did it. I should have said to vast majority of other teams as well. You know we need to put a, a squad out and we end up putting youngers on bench. I think that's where to go. Well, at the end of the day, you know, it's we're still living under these strange times, and you know, players are testing positive, whatever, and you know, they can't play. Hmm. And I, I don't agree with any teams calling off any of the games. You know, if we've we've got, you know, how many people, how many players do we have making their debuts on on the weekend, or players that sat on the bench that haven't started oh, before? A fair few, won't we? Because you know. Uh... We're scraping, we're scraping the team together, and then you've got teams like Arsenal or Liverpool trying to get games postponed. And you know they must have massive squads, you know, yeah. with all the depth there. And you know, their youth teams have probably 
do a good enough job against championship teams. Yeah. So, you know... The, the... Well, you look at Leeds United, I think they played um, West Ham a couple of weeks ago and they had uh, some young ones, I think a 15-year-old on the bench as well. So it, it can be done. But like you said, such you like your Arsenals and that because it's concentrated on Carabao Cup and all that and want to cancel. And, but then they send a player out and loan abroad. <laughs> it's like double standards, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense either to me. It's it's, it's like us, you know, letting Sibic go. If you're that, you know, Fred Bear with players, then you need to hold on to them. And I think um, Sibic's been told he's not in the plans. Why he's not in the plans, I don't know. Um Without naming players, he's 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 been a better centre half than some that played in that position this season. Mm. And I think with his speed, you know, matched against some players, he he performs really well. And I just don't understand the logic behind him going. There's obviously yeah. a bit of falling out. There's there's something going on behind the scenes as well. I think with these players, yeah. it's I don't know what's going off, but half of them don't look bothered, you know. And over the past few seasons, you know, we've had them. Um, some of the same players, you know, and they've been pumped up and they've been trying, but half them look like can't be bothered now. I mean, mm. Jordan Williams tries, you know, but he's not the most naturally gifted defender and he does get caught going forward sometimes, but he, he tries, he, he, he puts a shift in, yeah. you know, he tries his hardest and Carlton Morris, you know, same. And I think when I went to see Birmingham the other week, there was Killian Kitchen. You know, he, he he was trying, but apart from that, there was just no effort whatsoever. It's mm. just I just don't understand what's going on at the club. It's just we can see the mess from the outside. There's obviously a big mess inside. Mm. Yeah, you know why can't Hondemark get a game? He come on a sub in. I can't remember what it was now. A couple of weeks ago, he come on as a sub in one of the yeah. games, and he, he looked really good. He looked really good on the ball. Mm. His uh, his passing was good. He set he was he was setting. Um, Setting get things up and, and getting players the ball you know the ball out to different wings. Mm. He was going past players. And I just don't understand why he's not getting picked with that Fred Bear in the middle. Mm. And it screams out for him, doesn't it? The few times I've seen him, it was he came on against Stoke, I think, when we played Stoke away, mm. and he, he looked decent in that. And I, I just yeah. don't understand why he's not getting picked. So it, it, there's obviously something going on behind the scenes. You know, we've seen it time and time before with different clubs where so and so won't get picked because they've had a falling out with the manager. Yeah. Or something's been said, and I just think that I just think that Barnsley have got problems from one end to the other at the moment. You know, behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, on top of the scenes, it's oh, just the club in turmoil. And you know, it's 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 to do with the owners at the end of the day. I mean, it's 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 so poorly run. I mean, this you know, this is nothing completely irrelevant, irrelevant to you know what's going on at the moment. But you know, there was a joke video of the flag. On top of the West Stand. Oh yeah, yeah and it's, it's little things like that. It's just, <clears throat> it's just, there's just no care for the club at all. It, they mm. just do not care. You know, they've they've done absolutely nothing, you know, to, to better us. You know, we we did get lucky last season. Uh, this season, I they didn't expect us to do well. I didn't expect us to do yeah, this bad. Bad as this. But there's some. It's just rotten from one end of it to the other, and they just need to be out. They need to get new new people in. I know it's easier said than done, but it's, we need it because the club's just falling apart. Yeah, it's growing and growing now, isn't it? We uh, there's more and more people, you know, getting so irate and frustrated at what's happening at club, and it's it hurts to see because it's like every week, every game that goes past, it's like more damaging. And mm -hmm. like said, there with you know, with flag, and it you know it's like it's, it's say to disrepair, and it's like no care no commitment no passion it's just let it go just let it go by the by and it's, it's like for me this transfer window it just like seems to be just letting it go by and no real urgency or all like that uh to even try and, and please some fans try and get them on board of him and try and get a bit of goodwill factoring but there's none of that there they just um, resigned to relegation i think like us and yeah. they're thinking well you know i don't it's think we can get anyone in now that's going to keep us up i really don't i don't see it anyway we stayed up this season and they probably think the same yeah and that's that's one thing about it when they when they're behind the scenes are thinking that and they're obviously planning it it gives us as fans always still going to watch with what bit of hope we've got it's, you know slowly slowly getting ripped up and put to the back burner like a like flag just in tatters mm -hmm. uh so yeah obviously game on uh cardiff would you make 
many changes or any changes from the game against Bournemouth, Dave, in, inside the team? Can we? Can we make changes? That's the mm. that's the question. If any, I mean, is is any players come back from injury slash COVID sickness? I've not heard. Of. Available. I've not heard. Of. I think it is what it is. Maybe Styles, you know, might be on verge. Uh, not Styles, sorry, Britain. I know Woodrow still out, you know, he's round about saying it's going to be about March time for him. So what was, what was up with Britain? I didn't see what was up with him. Just out. Don't know if it's COVID related or it picked up or not. And this is what I'm on about. You're not getting real, you know, what in, what type of injury it is. No, we've, we've we've not had that all season. You know, players have been. We've had so many players out injured, and the the communication from the club and you know what's what's up with the players. How long they're going to be out for? It's just not like been there. Kitchen, yeah, another than kitchen. It's there's just there's just nothing, you know. It's 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 us and them, mm. you know. And it, again, it's just, it all comes back to not caring and just, mm. just you know. It's yeah, it's mm. well, you, everyone knows my views on the on the board and yeah, yeah. It's just evident. It's just evident wherever you look that there's just yeah. no care, and then nothing for Barnsley. It's just a it's just a club they own, and a way to a way to make money. But going back to the players. Um, I, well, I don't know. It depends who's available at the end of the day. Right. Mm. It's, it's, I'd start I, Matty Wolf again. I'd, I'd start Matty Wolf again. I'd give Wolf a game. Mm. I'd. Mm, I, I, the the eager fan in me wants to see Aiden Marsh get a start. Yeah. But I don't. I don't want to rush him into a side that's so low on confidence. Mm. There's nothing worse than the young lad. Coming into a side that's playing bad, mm. getting bad results, it's going to knock your confidence. And at that age, it's it's not the sort of thing you want. Yeah. But you know, Cardiff could be the game to to give him that chance because you know it's yeah, know. it's not a, a foregone conclusion that we're not going to get a result like Saturday probably was. Mm. Like you said, most people were probably predicting a bit of a bit of a cricket score on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wednesday, it's two teams that are not in the best of form. So yeah, maybe change things around. It's uh, a seeker. D didn't do a lot to impress me on on Saturday. No. He, had, he had some decent games. He had some decent games where he looked sharp, and he had a couple of runs down the left on Saturday. And apart from that, he was he was just absent. He just yeah. forgot he was playing. Yeah. So it, it yeah, seems to looks like you know ghost for some reason. For last, I said last few weeks, or probably last month, it, it's like seemed to be. I don't know, not chasing Dan and no agency about him again, you know. And I, I thought me, I think, I mean, Morris didn't start, obviously, because he was out injured, COVID, I don't know. But I think if he'd have started, I think he'd have probably put them, uh, I think it might have been a bit different on uh, against Bournemouth with Morris, because he started, after he's come back from his injury, starting to get back, you know, a bit of belief. I mean, yeah. he, he's one who's like, puts his on a bat and he's running. So... If there's Morris too is... much gap. There's too much gap in between the defence and the strikers. You yeah. see it against Bournemouth on on Saturday. The defence was back here, and you had um, Cole completely on his own up front. There was nothing in the middle, mm. and the players were running from you know players were getting the ball and running from deep. But there was just the shape was really bad for me on on Saturday. Mm. It was you know too top too bottom heavy if you like in the in defensive side of things. There was nothing in midfield at all. Absolutely nothing. And then you had Cole at front and Iseko where wherever he was wandering around to I d I don't know. I, at times I, I forgot he was playing. Yeah. And you know that that says yeah. uh, that says enough about him that does. He if you you're gonna out the game and you forget players are playing. Yeah. And that, it's, I've seen that a couple of times with Barnsley players, you oops, I forgot he was playing. I've gone missing. Just, yeah. But you know, they're just absent from, from the game and but we need some. We need more in the midfield. We do need more because there's just nothing going through there. It's the strikers are. You might as well just sit the strikers on the side if you're going to do that because they're just yeah. unless you're going to hit the long balls up, and they're not the sort of strikers that are going to win win balls in the air. I don't think and turn and do a job on. Them. They need support, you know. And there's there's no support behind them. It's they just seem isolated to me. So we, I think we need to get more in that midfield on. Yeah. On Wednesday, I think that's what I'm just about to say. That I think we need to get a grip on midfield uh, to stop them overrunning us because, mm, yeah, with what they were doing and uh, for you know for their win against Notts Forest, you could tell that's where they were going. 
and then if I wanted to play up to, like I said, Jurgil. Uh, so for me, you've got to. Uh, it's well, we've been saying it all season, haven't we? To be fair, midfield it's too weak, too lackluster. You need someone there, and although I'd like to see Undermark play, you need uh, sorry, uh, Wolf play. You need someone like an Undermark in midfield to actually boss it a bit, bully it a bit, yeah, not mm. to go straight through him. Because, like I said, you don't want Wolf's confidence knocking and all goodwill and intention. You don't want him going into tackles and you know picking up an injury or a silly booking kind of thing, a bit uh, naive. I think uh, Cardiff will be quite a physical physical side as well. And we, yeah. you've got players like Palmer that are not strong on the ball. If, you know, that's, the midfield is just going to get bullied, I think. Yeah. If we, we need to do something to... We've, well, not had a, we've not had a hard man in midfield for a long, long time. We, can, we don't have him anywhere in the team. And we get pushed off the ball so easily. We just, well, there's just no what? strength there. One of the things I would hope for in transfer window for at least a midfield to come in, what could actually make a difference... And like I said, we're going into the last few hours like now, there's no on the horizon. So that, that, that just says it all for me. Like, we, didn't we know what problems be, are. Didn't no. expect it to be anything. Just false hopes again, innit? Yeah. Just false hopes again. What do you think the score's going to be then, Dave? Uh, against Cardiff, I know you said it's like a bogey <laughs> team and that, but um, is, it, is it your head or your heart what's saying this? Or... <laughs> my heart says 1 0 Barnsley. Yeah. My head says one nil Cardiff. I just, yeah, I just don't see where a goal is going to come from. Mm. We just, we just not clinically enough. In front, we've said this for years and years now. We're just not clinically in front of goals. Yeah, and and that's what it boils down to. End of day, isn't it? That's what wins your games, isn't it? Scoring mm -hmm. goals. I mean, look how many we've scored this season. That says it all. Yeah, and the amount of goals in the team that started Saturday was. <laughs> Very poor, mm. you know. With the players that are getting the goals, are, they're not playing for us at the moment. Mm. So we, we're going to struggle even more than we have been. So I, I think it's going to be a one nil either way. Yeah, head saying one way, heart saying the other. But <laughs> I'm a I bit like you. Be, I think it's going to be disappointment once again at full time on Wednesday. Mm. I'm, I'm a bit like you. Uh, I don't think there's going to be many goals in it. To be fair, um, again. I think it's going to be close. I, I was going to say it was going to be 2-1 Cardiff, but I'd take a 1-0 Barnsley all day long. i just, again, with mm. Um You always scores against us as well. Yeah. Um, we've got to deal with him. And I think if we can, I was going to say if we can keep him quiet, but you've got to keep rest. But I think if we can do his job, and that's what we need to do. Uh, don't get bullied in midfield and stop their final pass because we're, we're going to rip it. I mean, if we get older, such as like your Vita and your Williams are fair playing at full backs, if Britain's not back, if they get round them and they're just going to keep on playing and playing it, I can't see what other option we've got. Or it's not going to change the style of play. It, I think it would just be damage limitation. But I'm going, I'm going two one card if although I. That's me, Ed. Me out saying I, I, I'd say 1 0 uh, Barnsley. But like I say, against Cardiff, we always, we always just seem to just mm. get results. We just get bites. It might not be prettiest of things, prettiest of games, but we always manage to come out with three points, don't we? Yeah, pretty That's much. That's concern over that. So it's been great to have you on, Dave. Uh, thanks for yeah, joining me. Good to be on. Good to uh, be on. What we'll do um, after the game, probably the day after, probably do another. Another call and uh, get your tech on uh, on game and see how it went. He's the commiserate or celebrate. Well, I'll, I'll still be up in town then. <laughs> I'll probably over from Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrating Cheers. that one nil win. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Yeah. Cheers, Dave. I appreciate it. Thanks for joining me. Uh, thanks for everybody for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, one thing left to say: you win.